the Rubicon. I'm sure a lot of people have no idea what in the world I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Rubicon. Well, the Rubicon, believe it or not, even if you try to even look for it today on a map, you probably wouldn't find it because it was that small. The Rubicon, and, it, and, and I'm going to give us a history lesson, and I'm going to show you how we're able to see what's going on today by looking at history and the vision of the past. The Rubicon was a little small river that set the actual borders, boundaries of the Roman Empire, all right? And after a general has came back from conquest, you know, war, whatever it, it may have been, be it Tiberius, uh, be it Pompeii, uh, or be it Julius Caesar, all right? Um, the Rubicon represented a boundary that once a conquering general, all right, came to the Rubicon, he would have to disband his army. And the reason being is because the one thing that the Romans could not stand in their republic that was democratically ran was for a general to bring his standing army in, become an emperor or king and take over the whole entire country. You know why? Because here's the alleged violation that's still going on today. And I'm telling you, if, if nothing else should have woke us up to what the hell is going on today, on my Patreon channel, over here on Patreon, I actually included that interview with Wolf Blitzer and Nancy Pelosi. And when you saw the posture of Nancy Pelosi, it should have told everybody in this world the way that the aristocrats, did y'all hear what I said? Let me take your glasses off. A way that the aristocrats view every single one of us today. You see, the aristocrats are the rich ruling elite. The only thing that make them elite is because they got more money than everybody else. But other than that, there's nothing elite about them. Nothing fancy about them. Nothing at all. But these people are people who claim to represent the people, i.e. Senate, House Representatives. They claim elected, selected officials. They claim to represent the people while they really, truly enrich themselves. I mean, you look at the wealth gap in the United States of America. That's the same thing and the same problem that the Roman Empire had. And let's let's talk about, I mean, Tiberius, uh, Gaius Tiberius. Tiberius Gaius was way before way, way before Julius Caesar, but I know one thing, I know that the Senate, um, man, they, they clubbed him to death. They clubbed him to death. Uh, decimation wasn't even a word for what they did to that guy and threw him off in the river. Didn't even give him a proper burning or burial. They talking about good guy. Anyway, let me don't digress on that. But anyway, uh, history shows us that Julius Caesar, one of the greatest military tacticians and generals that has ever been in the European Roman pagan Jupiter God worshiping society. That's what America's built on, the same construct. If you don't believe me, go look at the buildings of ancient Rome and then look at all of our government buildings here in America. They try to tell you through architect, they try to tell you through philosophy what they believe. It's just that people just ignore, they just accept it. You know, when you take a people uh, away from their culture, away from their, their country, and you stick them in another culture and country, then you get about four or five generations that's been birthed over here. They assume that this is the way things always been because people ignore history. And when they ignore history, you know what I'm getting ready to say, right? They're destined to repeat the same mistakes of the past because they don't know nothing. It's a very important. It's extremely important to know history because when you see things going on today, you see the same thing, same mistakes happening. Well, what's going on? We have an aristocrat, so we bunch a bunch of ruling elite that believe that they represent us, the people. Well, if that's the case, then why ain't Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats uh, going ahead and uh, putting money into the pockets of the people? You see, I got to digress. See, Tiberius, the one thing that Tiberius wanted to do was he wanted to get rid of that so-called, we call it capitalism today. He wanted to get rid of that, that big-ass gap 
that was taking place in his day. That was a big old gap in his day. The big gap was between the poor and the rich. I mean, the rich was enriching themselves. Fact. Out of every conquest they were, favors, under the table deals, the whole nine yards. Is it not the same thing today? Look at the majority of politicians. If they are not rich when they become a senator or the inside house representative, is it not remarkable and amazing how they all retire and end up filthy rich? Is it not amazing? Big backroom deals with corporations, favors being handed out and granted, and the people get nothing. All we get, get your butt out there and get the work. That's what we get. That's what we get. And they enrich themselves off our backs and off our labor. And what do we do about it? Nothing. Same thing was going on in Julius Caesar day when he turned around and, and uh, he crossed the Rubicon. I think he had 11 legions with him at the time. 11 of them. And when he came into Rome, I think, who was it? Cato? Cato? And I forget the other one begins with an M. They, they went over to Pompey because Pompey was a, a general, very successful general, and they wanted him to confront Caesar. All right? And Pompey and Caesar was great friends. But man, when Pompey started to try to see the type of uh, <clears throat> power that he could obtain, because his name was diminishing as Caesar's was going up. Man, man, man. That, I'll tell you what, so much friendship in, huh? Anyway. So Pompey made a big mistake by listening to senators who are not men of war. He should have stayed with his philosophy, his military tactics, because he was actually whooping Caesar. Um, whooping him pretty good. I had him out number two to one. But he, he was, he, he, them, them stupid senators kept spitting in his ear. And of course, he succumbed to what they said. And he, I mean, he just got blitzkrieg. I mean, they just annihilated him. Then, of course, you know history. Pompey fled off in Egypt, hoping to try to raise up another army, ultimately end up being killed there. Amazing. Utterly remarkable and amazing. So anyway, Caesar comes back in after crossing the Rubicon um, because he didn't like the way the aristocrats descending him was enriching themselves and the people wasn't getting anything. And Caesar made great promises to his army how that they would end up obtaining a lot of his lands and wealth. So anyway, uh, Caesar comes in. They had no military resistance. He ended up becoming emperor or king for life. Uh, I think he reigned for maybe four years. And anyway, what happened to Senate killed him too as well. And of course, one of his close, close, uh, uh, I think relatives, I think it was Brutus. Brutus, if my memory serves me right. That was real close to him. But anyway, um, it ended up having him killed off. Um, in other words, what we are doing today and what we're dealing with today is the same thing. We have a Roman system of government that's ruling here today. Our country is full of debauchery. Our country is literally a house of irrepute. Our country is. Our country is going to hell in a handbasket because there's no morals, no values, no absolutes, no rights, no wrongs. Every man doing that which is right in their own eyes. Um, our court systems are turned upside down. Now the Supreme Court, the, the greatest court of land allegedly, now they're making laws and legislating from the bench when you have lawmakers, i.e. senators, House representatives. It's just unreal what's going on. And, and then the very thing that the alleged so-called founding fathers, the slave owners, slave masters, uh, they tried to warn everybody about in this country is totally being ignored. And the only thing that is helping us maintain our sovereignty, the little bit that we have left, is that we have the ability to be able to um, own firearms and fire back. Uh, because no matter what, no matter how much military, they got a lot of bombs, I promise you that, but no matter how much military they have, um, the military pales in comparison with the amount of people that's in the United States of America. And if the people in America revolt against their government, you can count on Russia and China to come over and help. I promise you that. You can count on that.
because they hate America. But anyway, we have a bunch of rich ruling elite that are enriching themselves. Look at the president, billionaire. Look at the majority of people in the Senate, millionaires, 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 House millionaires, Nancy Pelosi, millionaire, uh, Mitch McConnell, millionaire, uh, Chuck Shoemaker, Shoemaker, millionaire. Uh, I go on and on and on. All of them millionaires, millionaires, millionaires. And then when they come time for them to hand out a stimulus package, they want to play politics or, or you know do the political thing with money that they're borrowing from our children's 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 future. See, when you start getting up the trillions, I don't think people can can really truly grasp what trillions are. I I truly don't. I I can't even get the concept of one trillion, much less twenty six trillion dollars in debt. But they are using the money that they're every time they they uh, make a deal every time they pass a bill all this pork that's inside their bill is it's more money that gets in their back pockets more money to their constituents more private contracts to to different uh companies lockheed martin boeing and all this other stuff it's just and and who are we what are we doing well we figured that we're in safety well i don't two things i don't discuss i don't discuss religion and politics that's because you are dumb as hell and you are a foolish ass individual that is is the heightened sense of stupidity. That's the reason why, because it's it's, it's too high for a pea brain mind. And of course, then when everybody starts imposing or these laws start imposing upon your lead so called privacy, all you're gonna do is capitulate. It's all you're gonna do because there's no fighting you whatsoever at all. So the Senate is basically the ones that are ruling the people basically and they believe all their heart that they are not only there to they hide behind they're saying we are representing the people but what they do is represent themselves they put the people second they put themselves first and their interests first but they're trying to make get you get you to see that we're representing you but they really represent themselves and again if you want to see the perfect model of that You've got to go on my Patreon channel and look at that interview with Wolf Blitzer and Nancy Pelosi. See, these CNN and the Democrats will be walking lockstep. But man, you saw the fire coming out in that feminist woman. You saw the fire coming out in her. Now, what is feminism? You know, I, I, I'm a, uh, feminism in this today and time, and I'm telling you, Anytime you look in history where a woman ruled anything, it went to pots. It went to crap. Anytime. Somebody said, well, what about Deborah the prophetess? She didn't rule nothing. All she did, all she did was give direction to a people in a country that were already decimated because of idolatry, Israel. See, anytime you have a woman, the last batch, the last ditch effort that's in place right there, that's what you end up getting. It still doesn't negate what Isaiah said in the third chapter that um, you can tell when a country, a world, and a society is out of order and Yah is no longer with them. How can you tell that? While children are your oppressors and women rule over you. That's not speaking disparagingly down on a woman. It's just as an order of things. Women are not designed to rule. To hell with being political and all this old other crap. The hell with this equality stuff. That's just the way it's, it's lined up, period. 1 Corinthians 11 tells you that the man is the head of the woman, period. I heard the other day a damn news reporter get on there, and there's a woman. And you can expect this, too. And the anchor was a woman. What happened to the men anchor today? Now, you even see it on sports shows, women anchors. I got Anyway, so you're watching this. You're watching this in feminine society right here. You're watching us decline fast because masculinity is being cursed at and scoffed at nowadays. But this woman reported, and this was interviewing this other woman, and she brought up Ephesians, the fifth chapter. She says, I might remind you that Ephesians 5 says that, that, that men ought to, treat, ought to treat their wives as Christ treated the church. They ought to respect them and honor them. One thing I can't say for that man, he came back fast and said, well, you know, this gross, I'm going to probably paraphrase this, put my words in it. This gross misrepresentation and distortion of the scriptures is satanic at, at the best. She quoted that part 
out of order and out of context, but then forgot the first part where it clearly tells you again that the man is the head of the woman in Ephesians 5. And over in Titus, the third chapter, it clearly tells you that the woman ought to be a chase keeper at home. And where they got that, where they got women at today? Out on the jobs. And that woman actually tried to turn around and make people think that it was a curse for a woman to be at home that she needs to be out in the job market with a professional career. I laugh my rear end off. Then we wonder why our children out here are having same-sex marriage. We wonder why that some of you are so spiritually retarded that you love your children so much that you will send them to a public food system that will teach them anal sex in elementary. You deserve exactly what you get. The decline is real. The downfall is real. All of it is real. And we're feeling it. We're feeling it too. Now I can say one thing about community and living on community stuff. At least we're able to preserve our culture and our heritage somewhat. As we continue to keep doing what we do and get farther and farther and farther away from these heathens in this world. Because if we continue to keep rubbing elbows with them and I'm telling you, you ain't going to know up from down, right from wrong anymore. Because what did the prophet say, Isaiah said? He said, the day is going to be, it's going to come when good is going to become evil and evil is going to become good. Tell me we ain't there. Tell me we ain't there. So you've got to come out of her according to 2 Corinthians 6, 17. You've got to separate yourself. You've got to be separate. There's no other choice. You've got to separate yourself from the heathen of this world if you're going to maintain any integrity of righteousness, truth, justice, and honor. Because if you don't do it, then the generation after you and that generation, and since you uh, chose to sell out being a mother, selling out for a greater lifestyle in this country rather than actually pouring wisdom and value and morality into the children, you chose to chase your career put off childbearing. You chose to go out and, and um, be a tramp rather than doing that highest calling which is in the universe which is mother. It can, I wish somebody would come on here and condemn me for my speech and what I'm saying. Tell me where I am wrong. Expose yourself. Tell everybody where Pastor Dowell is so wrong because see I promise you the only reason, you know, when you look at the majority of the fight and disagreement that people have with Pastor Dow on this internet right here, you know what it, most of it is? It's the way that I say things. Not the truth that I represent and the truth that I'm saying. They just don't like the way that I'm saying. You know why? I'm too masculine. Too, mad, too much testosterone. Yeah, testosterone. Yeah, too much of that. Well, that's actually a good thing because you know what? You're going to need a man of testosterone when it comes time for war. Because when them bullets start flying, there's a whole different character and nature involved in. 